All right, hello everybody. Welcome to Undertale. We are doing this today at SGDQ 2018. We're just going to do a quick start of a countdown. So everybody, five, four, four three, three, two, two one, go! go. All right, so we'll be doing the true pacifist route today, but we've met the donation incentive for all yellow credits. Shout outs to everybody who donated. And Toby Fox, who donated enough money to push over 30 grand. Yeah, we had a $6,000 donation from Toby Fox. Woo! That says, let's get those yellow credits. Good luck with the run, bark, bark. <laughs> Thanks, Toby. <laughs> Okay, so we're going to meet Toriel here. Oh, can we see the mouse? Oh, the cursor. It's, it's happened again. <laughs> <laughs> Every time, dude. So now to just introduce everyone on the couch, I'm Cookie Apocalypse. Yo, I'm Shay. I'm BBC. And uh, I never dream. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, this is Undertale. Oh, hey, and I'm Everdrade, in case you didn't hear it the first time. It's me. <laughs> <laughs> so we're going to run from this first frog in here. We don't need to talk to him. Yeah, even if you wanted to get the yellow credit on that frog, it, you can't because Toriel stops the battle after one turn. Thanks, Mom. And so now, coming up in this next room, we have probably the most important strat in the whole game. Uh, what we're going to be doing here is walking while facing down on the ceiling. And uh, hey. it saves like hey. 10 minutes. <laughs> That's very important to do, right? Oh, Shout very, out. very, yeah. Shout out to Tanner. It gets the yellow credit for the ruins wall. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so coming up here, we have the first battle we're going to encounter and get our first yellow credit. So we're going to do a, just a tiny grinding here if we don't get it right away. So we got the froggit, so we're going to compliment and then spare. And also the interesting thing about the froggit is there's a bit of luck there. If you get the frog attack, you can run into it and skip his turn like you just saw there. And now we just need a, another Whimson, or a Whimson here, and we just have to console that nice and fast, as long as we don't get unlucky. It's a 50% chance here, and unfortunately, oh, like, no. if this happens, you kind of just have to, like, come back into this room and grind for an extra encounter. 50-50 chance. Hey, there he is. There he is. Yeah. Unfortunately, right. because of uh, encounter luck like that, it really only applies in the ruins, but in the ruins, it is a huge pain. So this rock here, you don't really have to move the other two. You just only have to move the one. And we got froggets. So we could have gotten the molds moles there, but since we didn't get the molds mole there, we're going to go ahead and do the sparing sequence in Waterfall instead. This is the best character in the game. <laughs> Shoutouts to Naps to Bloop. <laughs> it's very dapper. Okay, so we're approaching the second half of Ruins here. So there's going to be different monsters that will spawn here. So just to be safe, we're going to grind out the what we got anyways. So Luke's, we're going to not pick on him. Don't be a bully, says Toby Fox. All right. So now we're going to go eat some vegetables with a Vegetoid down here. It's just a lot safer in general to grab this scripted encounter here. Uh, generally, if you're going for like perfect luck, you can just like go to the last room and get all three of the encounters here you need in a triple, but that's super rare. Hey, and wow, that's actually pretty good. That's everything we need. You just need to talk to Mygos, and you can also run into his attacks to skip the turn. 
All right, so we got all yellow credits in ruins. That was pretty good. Yeah. Now we just got to go fast. Okay, so there's not going to be too much happening here for a little bit. We have time for donations for just about a minute here. All right, we have a $150.66 donation from the Great Papyrus. Wowie, Sans, have you been teaching the humans how to use shortcuts? I shall have to keep my message brief in order for it to have a chance to catch up. Attention, humans of SGDQ, you are very good and extremely quick. I, the Great Papyrus, am cheering you on. Continue to move forward with great velocity and kindness. I believe in you. Oh, and hype. 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 Yeah. <laughs> 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 We also have a uh, $10,000 donation from Anonymous. Woo! Wow. And the comment was just, I like video games. Yeah, video games are pretty cool. Yep. All right, so we're coming up on the Toriel fight now. Nice menu. <laughs> Tactical. So this fight, fortunately for us, is just as luck dependent as the rest of the ruins. Uh, she has a hand attack up in the top left corner of the like attack box or whatever. If you run into it, okay, also something really quickly here, that's like pixel perfect, but whatever. It's weird and you only take one damage for some reason. Uh, but that actually allows us to get up to eight of these hand attacks right there. Odds of getting a hand attack are about one in three, usually. So uh, Twitch chat, if you want to spam some blessed RNG. And he's just taking damage here because on the uh, final turn, if you don't get a hand and get hit, it'll still skip it because Toriel no longer wishes to attack you. So it looks like, unfortunately, that was kind of unlucky. I think that was a three cancel, which is it's not the worst thing ever, but it's pretty below average. Reset. But still, overall, <laughs> this is, like, really good, especially for a marathon run. Okay, so we're going to be leaving ruins here, and we're going to go into Snowden, where we're going to meet a couple of cool dudes. And Sans. <laughs> uh, say, say bye to mom. Bye, mom. Bye, mom. See ya. <laughs> okay, so also really quickly, I'm just going to go over like how text mashing works in this game. Basically, most runners uh, prefer to mash in a pattern. There's a bunch of different ways to do the pattern, but for the most part, everything is the same speed. And yeah, so we've really just got a cutscene here and then a little bit of walking, so this would probably be a good time for some donations. All right, we have a $1,000 donation from Ashilika. I'm so excited for the Undertale run. Thank you so much for a great event and supporting Doctors Without Borders. We also had a $20 donation from Sans Undertale. No. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely had to donate during my favorite game. I'll donate five more for a correct answer to the question, would you smooch a ghost? Heck yeah. <laughs> Pretty spooky forest. Guys, I'm scared. Oh god, what's that? Don't look back. Uh, Don't look back. Oh no. <laughs> you look, it's Ness from Earthbound. 
Shout outs to the good old whoopee cushion in the hand. An age old classic. Shout outs to the convenient lamps. Oh yeah, that, that happens sometimes. Basically, he tried to set up that thing where you walk while facing down again. And unfortunately, because of the way it, it, that works, we have to like click out of the window. And if you like click out of the window holding like up, in order to move down, you have to, you have to like release and then press up again. It doesn't make any sense to me, but it's a thing. Also, uh, an important thing to realize is we saved there. Uh, that is not just for safety, but also at the very end of Snowden, we do have a chance to run into some attacks that save time. Okay, yeah. so we're going to be going into a battle here with our good friend, Snowdrake. So we're getting and his yellow credit by Yeah, we just checking. have to look at the joke. Yep. You can tell we, we saw the joke there. It was pretty funny. So we're going to laugh at it. Uh, ha, ha, ha. <laughs> uh. Doggo. We got a dog. Pat, pet, pat, pot, pat, pat. Uh, someone's been smoking some to dog treats. <laughs> dog treats. <laughs> All right, so we're actually going to walk under the ice here to progress the step counter, so we run into Ice Gap, who we're going to punch in the face. And then, after beating him up, we're going to steal his hat. Yeah. This is, this is true pacifist, by True the way. pacifist. <laughs> and now we're going to steal and compliment him. He looks great without his hat. It's a nice block of ice. All right, now we're going to get into the very, very hard puzzles of the run. Unfortunately, this one, there's no really clear indication on where to go, so we just have to memorize it. But if you memorize it, it's not that bad. Dude, how did you do that? Nice. <laughs> <laughs> so, who likes Junior Jumble? Junior Jumble or Crossword? Crossword. Ooh, junior Jumble is hard. Oh, junior Jumble it is, I guess. <laughs> His palms are sweaty. So in the uh, lesser dogfight, we throw the stick at him first because for some reason that has the same effect as petting him twice. And then we just have to pet one more time to get his yellow credit. You can actually pet that guy for like... Upwards of 10 minutes. Upwards of three years. Yeah. <laughs> he goes to the sky, then he comes the back down. There's actually a category extension for who can pet him the fastest. It was the first category I ever ran. Okay, so there's two attacks for uh, this sequence here. You have the axe attack, and maybe we'll get the other one. So we're going to re-sniff like, like a dog. And now we get to pet both of them. Yep. You roll around and then get re-sniffs, and now you smell like a dog, so they let you pet them. Yep, here's the other attack. This one's like one second slower. It's also very hard to dodge. Oh, I hit the wrong one. We're going to have to go Good back. Good job. <laughs> Rip. Stop rolling around. We already ran Sonic. <laughs> <laughs> All right, very hard puzzle here. Wow, you're incredible. Great work. And then the next room, they like try to turn up the difficulty a little bit more, but Papyrus doesn't really want us to do the puzzle. Yeah, he installed a switch that completes it for you. Speaking of switches, Undertale is coming to the switch, so. And then in this room, <laughs> we just get to decide to not do the puzzle. Yeah, it's actually faster to be dumb in this room and not understand the puzzle. All right, so since we pet lesser dogs... Save. 
now coming no, up in this room that. is the uh, the first like actual glitch in the run, uh, known as Ice Puzzle Skip. Basically, here uh, by ending or like by getting in a pixel perfect position on this block there. Oh, oh no. that's, that stinks. We can skip the end cutscene of this. Oh, uh, I'm sucking right now. <laughs> and then interestingly, because of like sub pixels, it's different. It's a different pixel that you have to stand on if you come in from that room. I'm pretty sure it's one pixel farther to the right. So yeah, because like sub pixels are messed up, it didn't work. Unfortunate. And then also, probably Ball. the hardest part of this run is we have to remember to go down and get Gift Trot in this room. Yeah, so there's a special enemy called Gift Trot. You can only encounter him in this room. You never see this in any of the other categories. Here he is. I mean, it's almost July, but I guess it's Christmas time. So in order to get his yellow credit, you just have to be the Grinch and uh, undecorate him, and he's happy about it. Now we have our friend Greater Dog. This is the main reason we healed earlier. He has a dog attack at the bottom of the screen that you can run into, and it skips the turn. So hopefully we'll get like five of those. Oh, I hit the wrong one. Shout out to Dog Song. Interestingly, because you're slower on this turn, if you get a dog skip, you actually have to like take extra damage in order to just skip the turn. Aww. That's adorable. All right, so this is the deadly gauntlet of deadly terror. Pretty difficult. So we got a whole bunch of weapons, and then our friendly dog up on the right hand yeah, corner. Yeah, I'm more scared of that dog than anything else, to be completely honest with you. <laughs> but I must ask where Papyrus obtained a flamethrower. Elon Musk? <laughs> <laughs> Nice. Right. Okay, so there's an optional strat you can do here. It doesn't save time, but if you interact with the sign in front of the igloo, the frame you enter, you can use that to wrong warp into the Papyrus boss fight room. It Speaking saves a whole two frames. It, it, it does not save time. <laughs> Speaking of Papyrus boss fight. But now we're moving into the Papyrus fight. This is actually probably the hardest part of the run, so I'm just going to be quiet and let Snowy do this. All right, Snow, you got this. Come on, I believe in you. I've got money on you, dude. Oh, dude, what are you doing? I'm trying. You're not supposed to go into the attack. Go in the down. Oh. Okay. Dang it, I had $100 on you. Don't worry, he just puts us in his garage. So we can try again. Don't worry. We got this. You got it this time, Snowy. That was really hard. I'm sorry. I'll try again. It's actually slightly easier the second time because you skip like the very start of the fight. So it, we should be good here. Hopefully. Fingers crossed. Whoa, you're blue. What are you doing? I'm trying. Like, I'm trying. I'll try, like, I try harder then. No, he's supposed to jump. Come on, man. Try holding up to jump. Try, try and holding up. It's just he's pushing me back down in the corner. Uh, come on. What are you doing? I'm trying my best, okay? Well, they say third time's the charm, right? I guess. Let's try it again. You got this. No, come on. I believe. Third time's chub. Come on. All right, Papyrus. Here we go. Oh. oh. What? what? 
Okay, now I'm just getting now I'm just getting salty. Snowy, come on, man! I thought you were better than this. Okay, come on, last hit. You got. This. Come on, just just jump. All you have to do. I'm jumping. I'm jumping. <laughs> oh, that's embarrassing. That's okay. unfortunate. I'm just I'm starting to get salty here. Uh, Might be a little behind. This time, Snowy. Now. This time you got it. Come on, okay, Snowy. Fourth time is the charm, right? <laughs> yeah, sure, why not? Have you considered changing your strategy? Um, I'll try that, actually. All right. <laughs> and there it is. Hey, we beat Papyrus. We did it. First try. Faster than, <laughs> compared to doing it, uh, actually fighting through it. Yeah, it's faster. Papyrus' fight takes a really long time. Okay. Yeah, it's, it was like a minute and a half, I think. We so. honestly, three different people have timed it and got like largely different numbers. So, right. so we, we don't got, really know for sure. We got beaten up by him three times. Now we're gonna go date him. This is the proper course of events. And actually, I'm going to use this as a chance to talk about the different versions of the game. So we are currently playing on the 1.001 Linux version of the game, specifically the Linux version because it fixed uh, the inputs a little bit. Basically, on the original version of the game, if you held down Enter and pressed Z, the first input wouldn't work, but the second would, and the Linux version fixed that. Unfortunately, like on the current version of the game, the inputs have a bit more of an issue and like if basically Enter and Z and X and Shift are treated as the same button. But also, the fastest version of the game is the Japanese version, but we decided to play on English because it's better. Also, super important strat there, spaghetti skip, refuse to eat the spaghetti, saves like three seconds. I can never do it. <laughs> spaghetti is pretty good, but I refuse today. I really like his shirt. He's a cool dude. Yep. Yeah, so that's the papyrus date. Now we move on to waterfall. And unfortunately, the very start of waterfall is kind of uneventful, but pretty soon we'll be getting a certain item that does the fast. All right, so we have time for donations here. Just a little bit of time, like a couple minutes. Okay, we have a $1,000 donation from Adam Kadratic. <laughs> Undertale helped me get through a hard time in my life, and I couldn't think of a better way to pay it forward. And we also have a $1,100 donation from the Maple Kingdom. <laughs> Greetings from the Queen Regent and the rest of the Maple Kingdom. We couldn't be bone idle and not donate during the sensational Undertale run. To be honest, the host has a secret. She is a funny bone for puns, so be sure to send all your humorous rib ticklers. <laughs> Break a leg, Snowy. Donation goes towards naming Mog Maple in Final Fantasy VI. <laughs> All right, we're going to beat our little buddy here, Monster Kid. <laughs> Poor guy. So in this room, we have probably the most annoying puzzle in the game. These flowers can be really awkward to grab sometimes. And if you, like, make a small mistake in placing them, you lose, like, 10 seconds really quickly. Right. So here we have Aaron, who we're going to run from. He's scary. We can't get his yellow credit now, unfortunately. And he's actually the only yellow credit that we get outside of battle, I think. Yeah. Yeah. But we will get Wash with yellow credit in this next room. Mm -hmm. All right, so we're going to take a bath. All right, now that we're all clean, he's happy. Take showers, kids.
All right, so Undyne is going to throw a bunch of spears at us. Um, yeah. That's a thing. So really only, like, the, the main important thing that's happening here is most of the time we're kind of manipulating her to aim the spears towards the bottom. And honestly, your hitbox is kind of messed up and, like, part of the head doesn't exist. And there's a large portion, like, you can get hit under you. But luckily, nothing weird happened there. You can't get hit by any of these spears. You can actually get hit on the second volley. Really? I've done it way too many times. How? Uh, if you're, like, at the very bottom and it comes from the bottom. And I think the same for the top. If you just stay in the middle there and just go forward, you'll never get hit by a spear. Wow, Undyne just touched me. <laughs> never washing my hands again. In this case, his face. <laughs> Oh, yeah, he doesn't have hands. He's a little <laughs> bad man. <laughs> all right, so we're coming up on the, uh, the greatest item of all time. It's uh, a little something called the punch card. Now, if you played Undertale casually, you might have just not even known this thing existed. I sure as heck didn't. But basically, when you buy an ice cream from this salesman, he'll put a nice punch card in the box. And this punch card, uh, it does very interesting things. Yeah, basically, if you get three of them, you can buy another nice cream yeah, for free. That's, that's the main function. It's definitely not snowy. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> it definitely doesn't break the game in two. So that is actually frame perfect. We'll kind of get into the explanation of that, because that's like the most complicated version of Glitch with the punch card. Uh, we're just going to start off with the basics in like a second. But first, we got to get the yellow credit for Moldsmo, who we're going to run into right now. We gotta flirt with him. It's a really meaningful conversation. And then you just good to go. So now in this next room, we're gonna like do the first normal punch card exploit. Basically, this was just known as like a normal PCE. And if you open your menu on the same pixel that a cutscene starts, and then use the punch card, the cutscene will start before the punch card appears on your screen, and then you can close the punch card which allows you movement during the cutscene. But unfortunately, Snowy missed that. Also, so this is one of the harder punch card exploits because there's no like clear visual cue on where it is. All right, so Shiren, we're going to hum at them a bunch. A and lot. Yeah, five times. I checked Shiren. Good job. <laughs> This attack can get kind of tough to dodge in the later stages because it's completely random. So sometimes it's really easy, and other times it's, uh, it's a little Toho in here. <laughs> Oof. Oh. Uh. Nice. Good job, Thanks. Snowy. Great no hit. <laughs> So hopefully now in this room, uh, you'll see the first like successful PC, basically how it works. This one doesn't save very much time. So most runners either like try to go for it like only frame perfectly or just don't even care. Also, another cool thing about this text box is if you mash away this too early, Monster Kid will just like slowly walk past you and you'll soft lock. He's going to do it again here. So one time. <laughs> also, holding down up and down in this room makes you walk at double speed. Uh, don't ask. It's not worth explaining. Nobody knows why. <laughs> so an interesting small skip here. Basically, the, the thing that makes the punch card work is when you, use your, when you open the punch card in your menu, one frame passes, and then the punch card appears on your screen. So what he did there was he interacted with Monster Kid in that one frame before the punch card appeared on his screen. And then closing the punch card allows them to move after talking to Monster Kid. And we can use that to store text boxes and stuff like you've probably already seen. And that was actually a really clean Undyne Spears 2 skip. So it's not going to skip the whole thing, just the actuation cuts in. You still have to dodge Spears, unfortunately. Which gives us a nice solid lead over Undyne. But... 
Yeah, Undyne's got a sprint to catch up with us. We're going places. She's coming. Eventually. No. She'll be there. Undyne's just done. There she there is. There we go. <laughs> Also, kind of interestingly with these spears, if you, like, move towards the bottom, you can kind of get them to shoot off the bottom of the map. So, uh, entering Spears 2 actually gets rid of our menu, so we can't skip this cutscene, but we actually need this cutscene to progress, so, hey, that works out. So Undyne's just going to break the bridge, and we're going to fall uh, a distance. I don't know, the game never really clarifies how far you fall here. Can't be that far because the duck thing's up there. SGDQ, huh? That's a nice name. <laughs> <laughs> My name is, uh, spoilers. <laughs> oh, oh, didn't get it. Uh, don't worry, we'll have another chance later. Basically, what he was trying to do there is if you uh, walk Safe. up and right at a pixel-perfect position, you can walk on top of the water. And you can also do it by uh, wrong warping into this room. There you and go. And basically, now is a good time to explain how wrong warping. Actually, no, it's not, because we've got to come up on the Mad Dummy fight. We'll explain it right after. So the Mad Dummy fight here, uh, at the start of the fight, we're actually going to not hit him as much as we can in order to manipulate his attack patterns. Basically, if you hit him too much, he will skip an attack, and doing it this way allows you to hit him a lot more. In all yellow credits, you also need to talk to him at least once during the fight, and then you'll get the credit. Some might be asking, wait, why aren't you skipping, Mad Dummy? There's actually not one, but two invisible walls after the Mad Dummy fight. Toby really did not want speedrunners to skip Mad Dummy. I'm good for it, too. It's the most interactive fight in the game, probably. A lot of neat mechanics going on in this one. So you can see this is the attack here that we delayed to get. There's a lot of cotton balls here. Mm -hmm. All right, let's see if Snowy can get five cycle. That's the most optimum you can get. That's really good. That's really good, yeah. I should have it. Yeah, definitely. Here nice. We go. All right, anyway, now the old dummies are out, and he's going to bring in some mecha dummies. We turn into robot rockets. Yeah. And these don't matter at all. Hitting that dummy doesn't speed anything up or lose any time. Yeah, you actually just need to progress the fight now. I want to hit him anyways. <laughs> Oof. Ooh, nice. This music is great, by the way. Mad Dummy. Wait, actually, one more thing. Make sure to dodge this. It's the hardest attack to dodge in the game. It's a knife. <laughs> uh. Easy dodge. Well, I guess he's out of knives. <laughs> By the way, these teardrops actually do do one point of damage. Um, I may or may not have one point lost a run to that. <laughs> nice. I love you, Shay. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> oh no! Oh no! Oh, no. <laughs> so normally we would skip this cutscene, but it's a little weird, and like the text kind of gets stuck if you try to save there. So what Snowy's doing here uh, is known as a wrong warp. And basically what he's doing is he's lining up perfectly against this green transition so that uh, when he opens, the, when he uses the punch card in his menu in the one frame before the punch card appears on his screen, you actually walk into the screen transition. And then the punch card appears on your screen. And the important thing about these is 
when the punch card appears on your screen, you will like wrong warp into the default position in the next room. But if you don't close your the punch card before you fully screen transition, you'll actually be in the next room but not be able to move, and that's just a soft lock. So you need to make sure to close the punch card before entering the next screen. It's Temmie. And then you also have to make sure to not walk back into the screen transition. Oi. 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 Okay, so right. we have one of the harder tricks coming up here in the run. This is something called flower flow. Um, it's interesting, but it's fun. All right, so Snowy gets the first half of it. Uh, you have to do this one more time, and then you'll get the full skip. Wow, that's loud. He tried, but whatever. He did get the first half of it, so he's not losing any time at all because he got to walk over to the left. But if he did get the skip, he'd be able to move around during this cutscene and do fun things. And unfortunately, you still have to like watch the whole cutscene, but when it ends, you get movement back a lot faster. Yeah, the path forward doesn't actually open until this cutscene is done right now. And now the path open is here. Okay, I'm going to need some silence here for the... All right, hardest trick in the game right here. Nice. Nice. Hey, here we go. Awesome. All right, so that was something called one dine. So in the undine cutscene there, there are three triggers. There is the first cutscene, there's the second cutscene, and then the screen transition. So what you have to do is punch card the first screen transit or punch card the first cutscene, punch card the second cutscene, and then wrong warp out of the room during a very specific time while Undyne is coming down from the top uh, after you mash away her text. Otherwise, it just doesn't work. That's also like a super weird wrong warp. It works like differently from every other wrong warp in the game for some reason, and I don't know why. But doing all of that allows you to not only skip the Undyne cutscenes, but only have to fight her once. So this is going to be our last attack, and then we're just going to run away from her. So how precise was each of those interactions from three? Uh, all of them are frame perfect. Jeez. Well, the wrong work isn't frame perfect. Uh, well, it might as well be. <laughs> if it was Ocarina of Time, it'd it's be weird. frame perfect. This game is like, the hard stuff isn't frame perfect. And then also, uh, here, if we skip this cutscene, then you don't have to undine water. Yeah, uh, the game sets a flag, if you ignore Undyne and leave her, like, heat, exhaustion, if you leave her there, it sets a flag, but if you ever actually watch the cutscene, it never sets that flag, so you can just walk past and the game thinks you watered her. So, yay. Thanks, Toby, for letting us speedrun. So anyway, we just skipped Quiz Show, and now Alfie's is going to text us a bunch, even though we never met her. I don't know who this person is. Your phone doesn't even take texts. She's yeah. getting them to you. All right, so this is Vulcan. Um, in neutral runs, we kill him, but we're going to spare him because we're nice people. And now we're just going to walk through this nice conveyor belt sequence and walk up. So in this room, uh, the punch guard does weird things with these vents. It lets you do stuff like that. All right, so here we have a plane. Uh, shout outs to Polar, plane facts. And you're going to approach the plane. You gotta hit four of those green things. And then we can just hit the screen transition from the back here, yeah. and it just puts <laughs> us in the room normally. We're gonna go grab the pan because we're gonna beat the crap out of Asgore with a pan. Sounds right. And then there's some wacky stuff you could do at the end of this room, but uh, for the most part, he's just gonna take a normal safe shortcut onto that then. And now these lasers also have like pretty bad hitboxes. Their hitboxes are like. There's a, a decent amount in front of the lasers that can actually hit you. And now in this room, we can just use this vent to go straight through the door. Puzzles, what are those? Never heard of them. Anyway, so now we're going to use this, ref this conveniently placed refrigerator, even though you can't see it. A little more to the right. There you go. And he's going to not only get text storage, but open up the punch card one more time. It kind of messes with the sequence. 
that the game runs, but it lets you completely skip cooking show and the jetpack sequence, which is, that's pretty cool. And now, just because we loved Undyne so much, we're going back to Waterfall. Yeah. The real reason is that uh, doing any, skipping any of the Metaton cutscenes, uh, as soon as they activate, you, uh, the game sets you to a state where you can't use your menu, and that's no good. So we're going to leave Hotland and get our menu back. And now we have our menu, so we can do wrong warps and teleport and stuff. Also, you can use the punch card on the elevators, and I mean, who, who, who waits for elevators, honestly? Anyway, here we have Heat Rope. <laughs> Shay. <laughs> so this is Pie Rope. Uh, we call him Heat Rope because Snowy called him Heat Rope once on stream while he wasn't thinking. I don't know why that stuck, but it just did. Uh, we're going to heat up twice. It's going to get really hot in here. It's going to start looking like Florida, and then we're going to spare him. All right, I'd like to issue a volume warning. Oh, yeah, make sure you turn up your headset for this. It's really nice. It's not super big, but basically the problem mm. here is that Snowy won't answer his phone. Pick up the phone! <laughs> <laughs> That's stylish. Anyway, Snowy's going to take a safety save here, and then we're going to walk into the double feature. Uh, we're going to skip the Royal Guards, and then we're going to skip the new show, too. Interestingly, even though this is all your credits, there is only one way to spare the Royal Guards. So if we don't kill them, the game just assumes we did it. And we don't have to worry about them at all. So here we're just going to buffer in the dark, and there we go. Nice. You got it. Goodbye. Anyway, if you mash this text away here, you can actually get the news music, so... It's newsworthy! And now we don't have our menu again, so we're going to go back once more. There'll be one more time in just like two minutes. Breaking news story. Speedrunner goes fast. <laughs> anyway, we got our menu back. Uh, fun music is gone now. Unfortunate. And we're just going to head back to the main path now. Again, waiting for elevators is really overrated, so we don't have time for that. And then the... Uh, wait, who's that character there? I don't, I don't recognize them. That, is that Sans? Is that Sans? Yeah, I don't know who that is. So in this skip, in order to skip this puzzle here, uh, on top of the punch card being frame perfect, we actually have to close it frame perfectly <laughs> in order to be able to get out of bounds. Good job. Oh, that was really good. Yeah, that skip can be annoying. And we're just going to walk behind the door. Yep. All right, so... I don't, I, I've never gotten the point of this room. There's just a room full of empty cobwebs. I, I don't... No, there's a couple of spiders. I, I, I don't I, know yeah, what's going on in this room. What's like the point? It's like to set the tone. Was there, like, supposed to be an enemy here or something? I guess. It's scary. Something what? spider related? Perhaps. Um, who... I'm sorry, everybody. <laughs> I'm sorry. You don't get to hear the best song in the game. I'm sorry, guys. And then it's the same thing for Muffet that it is for Royal Guards. You don't have to fight her because there's only one way to spare. Or at least, like, no matter how you spare, you get the yellow credit. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we just walked past Opera. So we don't have our menu again. But instead of going right to the elevator, we're actually going to go up here and watch this cutscene. Yeah, watching a cutscene in an Undertale speedrun, I know. But um, basically... When you skip opera in that way and you don't do the tile puzzle underneath, uh, the game never sets your story flag. So by going and watching that cutscene, you have the right story flag now and you can actually use the elevator. If you try to leave and go use that elevator early, you won't be able to come back to right floor three and it's, uh, yeah, it's not fun. And we can just loop left floor three infinitely. Yeah. You can the skip, best skip in the game. You can skip Muffet over and over again just to rub the salt in the wound. <laughs> Anyway, this is the last time we have to go back to Waterfall. We're going to have our menu for the rest of the run, thankfully. I think. Yeah. Yeah. So again, elevators. Nobody likes to wait for elevators. Bye. And we're going to head up to Core after crossing through the... Uh, oh, hi, Sands. Bye, Sands. After crossing through this nice hotel. 
So core, it's an interesting place. Uh, a lot of a lot of skips actually. So first things first, we're gonna skip this encounter here. Nice. This laser pattern is always the same. It's always blue, blue, yellow. It's exactly the opposite of what uh, Alphys tells you. You can't skip these two phone calls here because Toby put invisible walls. I don't know why. Yeah, most of Alfie's phone calls have invisible walls. So we're going to hold the text box there and run into these lasers. And because of doing that, the lasers never actually refresh. So you can just walk right through. There's also another variation of that skip you can do. That was cool, and no one does it anymore. Yeah, it feels bad. It's not faster. I'm okay, upset. so here's the core puzzle. We're just gonna complete real quick. And then also because we uh, close the punch card after interacting with it, we can kind of use the uh, cutscene to try to wrong warp out. Because basically, if the cutscene ends while you're still in the screen transition, that'll work the same way as like a normal wrong warp. All right, so this here, this is unique to all yellow credits. We're actually going to go up to the warrior's path to get all of our encounters. So first up is uh, Whimsalot and Final Froggit. Uh, both of them are in the same way, actually. You just have to mystify for Final Froggit, and you have to, I think, pray yeah. for Whimsalot. Yeah. And now we're going to run into the greatest encounter in the game, Night Night and Magic. So Snowy's actually going to do a safe strat here where he's going to stare at both of the orbs. Uh, the faster strat is just to talk to him. But um, that messes with your controls. <laughs> and these guys do a lot of damage. They're kind of scary. Anyway, we got magic done. So now we're just going to put Night Night to sleep by singing at it. It's an interesting fact here. If you sung with uh, Shiren, it only takes two turns to sing Night Night to sleep. Yeah, it usually takes three. but. I guess we learned how to be really good at singing. Okay, so we're going to be coming up to astigmatism here. It is a 50-50 chance here, because it could either be don't it's, pick it's on or pick, pick on. on. It's pick on. All right, let's do pick on. Don't pick on. Ah, cookie. come on, cookie. It's, it's pick on like 90% of the time. Okay. Well, obviously not this time. If you said don't pick on, it would have been pick on. I've never gotten it right when I went for pick on first. Or not, don't pick on. All right, that's all the yellow credits for core, so we're just probably going to take a safety so now, save real quick. Yeah, we're just going to take a safety save before the Metaton fight. It's actually pretty challenging. Yeah. Hard fight coming up here. See a loser. <laughs> <laughs> See a loser. <laughs> all right, so uh, in neutral, you'd skip this upcoming cutscene, but since we're in the true pacifist route, we actually do have to watch this cutscene because this sets the flag for Metaton being spared, and if you don't have this, uh, you can't do dates. That's it. So uh, this cutscene's gonna finish. We're gonna walk into the elevator. It's a really long elevator. Not really at all, actually. So as long as you hear that noise at the elevator, that's how long the elevator actually was supposed to be. Yeah, you hear that sound? It's still going. We're like all the way in New Home, and it's still going. Yeah, it's still going. Still going. That's actually probably my favorite part of there the OST. All right, so here we have this nice, long, boring story segment. Resident sleeper. <laughs> so there is actually a couple of like decently sized skips. We can skip a couple of encounters here. So basically, what he's going to do is buy. Nice. You can just barely get into the room with that cutscene. And what that does is it gives us the whims and encounter here instead of a triple mold small, which takes forever. And that saves like 10 seconds. And also interestingly, something important about that is for some reason, holding up against walls makes screen transitions and like enemy encounters take longer to happen. All right, so this is the time for donations for a while. Yeah, this is gonna go on forever, so. <laughs> All right, I actually have a $44,400 donation from the Yeti. Wow. It says, hey all, Yeti here. Thanks for all your support. We wanted to give a special shout out to all the artists who made designs for the event. Mark, Logan, Kevin, Drew, Casey, Tiffany, Jamie, Ian, 
Zone and JMV. You all rock. We also have a $1,000, $990 donation from a pretty, pretty pony that says, Undyne is best girl. Enough said. Not wrong. Mm -hmm. We have a $500 donation from Fumin. Undertale is a phenomenally simple, brilliant game that tells us so much about friendship, determination, and what you can achieve when you truly believe in anime. I mean, yourself. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks to everyone at GDQ who makes this event feel like speedrunning is a family. You're wonderful. Shout outs to my buddy Koyo, who is watching this secretly at work. I approve. Don't get caught. <laughs> We also have a $500 donation from Anonymous that, of course, says, Hug the Goat. <laughs> we also have a $20 donation from Marzipan. Last donation for me. I've been looking forward to the Undertale run all week. My fiance and I absolutely love the game, and there's nothing I'd rather do today than watch this run with her at my side. I love you, Maddie. Let's stay determined together. Aww. Aww. Got another one? It's still going. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We have, um, let's see here. We have a $50 donation from Cross Product that says Undertale and Sakura Subasa. This is the best Saturday afternoon ever. But why did they punch Ice Cap? This must be a true <laughs> pass a fist. Run. Oh. Uh, no. <laughs> uh. Nice. All right, that's the end of Monster Tail. Thank God. <laughs> and we get to go and see Sans again for a little bit. Yeah, so here we come up to the best character in the game, Sans Undertale. And uh, we're just going to walk right past him. Bye, dude. Later. Later, Sans. And now we just do a series of quick wrong warps known as the Rambu Kambu, and then we're in the Asgore fight. Yep. We skip meeting Asgore, we just go straight to fighting him. <laughs> All right, so the way this fight works is that he's going to use the pie first turn, but from then on, he's just going to be hitting him with a pan. And the pan has four attacks, little bars that pass through that you need to time perfectly. Um, every time you do that, four times it's called a quad and it does double damage if you manage to land it so the best you can do for Asgore is beating him in nine turns as opposed to like 18 if you don't get quads nine so. turns not including the pie turn yeah. and also each individual bar is frame perfect so you've only got to hit 36 frame perfect inputs in a row it's yep. pretty easy so uh I challenge you chat I'm donating donating five dollars for every quad he hits and I'll get a hundred if he does a task score match it I dare you <laughs> Tascore is already dead. Feels bad, man. <laughs> <laughs> nice. This one. Oh. Uh, another one frame late. Oh, that was really bad. Oof. Nice. Three. Oh. 
I'm getting so close on every single one of them. It's the Asgore special, missing by one frame. <laughs> oh, Ooh, that uh, was literally one frame. Man. This is not a good fight. Ooh, I got hit. Nice. Okay, there it is. There Four quads. And now, uh, yeah, so about this. Um, the game doesn't actually save what we do past this point, so you can kill Asgore and it doesn't have any consequence and it's faster. So we're breaking our pacifist for just a little bit. I think it's faster. Yeah, we just have to beat Flowey to be able to get Undyne's letter. Hee hee hee. So you finally get it in this world. Let's kill, kill or be killed. Whoa, it's Mike Wazowski. How'd they do that? <laughs> <laughs> oh, what? I didn't know this was Kingdom Hearts 3. What? <laughs> File a race. That's not good. Uh-oh. Uh, oh, no. Uh-oh. Oh. Dude, what if you soft block on Flowey? Oh, no. <laughs> I remember getting here casually, and I had no idea what was happening. <laughs> I mean, it's pretty normal. It's just like a flower. Yeah. A giant flower with static, and he's laughing and evil. I'm talking about becoming God. Pretty normal stuff. <laughs> oh, the cursor's back. <laughs> yeah, can you move the cursor? <laughs> 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 I'm sorry, Twitch chat. What do you really think you can stop me? You really are an idiot. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the one and only, Flowery. <laughs> <laughs> Flowery. <laughs> Flowery. <laughs> oh no. Oh no. <laughs> Sorry. So yeah, this guy here, Everdred, he actually, uh, he designed a lot of this, a yeah, lot of the assets. So, uh, my name's Everdrade. I was the guy who did the uh, Photoshop, and After Effects, and animation, a little bit of battle design for this uh, this fight. <laughs> so uh, my apologies to uh, everybody who had to experience this stuff. But uh, it's amazing seeing people play this. Uh, when the game first came out, I'd watch streams of people getting this and be like, what the heck is going on here? And it's the most amazing thing. So thanks so much for playing this game. I'm so proud. <laughs> Thanks for making it. <laughs> Shout outs to Everdread. Shout outs to everybody who worked on Undertale. You guys are awesome. Yeah, come on! funny looking at this fight because like uh, the original assets are super high rent and it's like it's in a little game now it's so small but it's uh so out of curiosity where did you get the the assets for the eyes on this thing i think that was actually provided by toby uh, as far Ooh, as the eyes uh, so uh, there's some stuff that i worked in that was uh definitely a toby special so <laughs> trying to integrate that stuff with other 
content around it was fun. So fun fact, during these soul phases, you can't, you can't actually die. Um, you have infinite health. You take damage, but like, you get healed at the end of it anyway, so who cares? So it's not about you know, conserving health or anything, it's just about getting to the act as fast as possible. Yeah, this fight actually has a lot of checkpointing going on to kind of let people have a really high tension moment, but also so they can progress. It feels really brutal in the moment. But for somebody who's fought this guy hundreds of times, it's pretty hard to die to him. Can't happen, though. Mm. All right, so we're going to move on to our third soul phase, which is the ballet shoes. And if you're not careful with this one, you can actually miss the egg button. And All you have to it. do is just go to the right of the screen and just mash, enter, and Z. It's really not that hard. Yeah. I don't know how anybody could miss that. I've missed this I agree. I, 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 don't know, I don't know how you do it. I've missed it once before. It was very embarrassing. <laughs> That's like even harder than dying. <laughs> I've died to Flowey multiple times, like like maybe four times in speedruns. Flowey has a lot of attacks. He's got a laser. He's got a flamethrower. Those are the only ones that got in. There's a bunch more kind of on the shelf. So uh, I was actually uh, when I was making this, this turned out to be like way more assets than all the other sprites in the game. And Toby was like, no, we can't do more. You got to stop. You got to stop. You can't do any more than this. Was one of the attacks uh, launching a car into space? <laughs> I, don't, I don't think so. I don't think All right, left or right? Right. I'm hearing left. I'm hearing left. It's left. It's left. It's left. It's left. It's left. No. Oh, you lied to us. How could you do it? <laughs> There's like a strat I do every time based on like the side the previous words come from. And it all it works when I do it, but every time I've told somebody, it just hasn't worked. Oh yeah, Flavi uses save states, by the way. Cheater. Like yeah. sure. <laughs> yeah, but he cheats to make it like super easy for you. Because if you know what he's what he's doing, you just like tap left a little bit and you dodge all of his yeah. attacks. Flow, I'm gonna have to ban your run from speedrun.com. That's splicing, my dude. <laughs> Unfortunate. So he's just gonna stand in the fire and just wait for the act since he can't die, and then he's gonna get healed up immediately. All right, so we only have one more phase left, and it's the gun phase. Oh, the head that's in the TV. Is that? That was another Toby provided uh, little asset there, so I can't. Is that his face? I can't make any uh, definite statements upon that sort of stuff. But, okay. Uh... <laughs> I've always been curious. Anyway, here's the last soul phases of the gun. It's going to shoot eight bursts of three. It's and all um... thing here, if you move like away, it shoots faster. And then at the very end of this, uh, right when like the phase normally ends and you would start to heal, we're actually going to close the game and relaunch it. In order to skip a cutscene where like all the souls like heal you, but oh, you go right past it. Mm -hmm. We don't. We don't care about that. We're gonna go right. We're, into that. We're just gonna. All kill right, him. it's uh, time for Al Spam Twitch chat. Let it rip. O W in the chat. Just get global. I don't care. Spam as fast as you can. You actually can't get global anymore. It's not a thing. Oh well, whatever. Oh. All right, here we go. Ow! 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 Ow. 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 Come on, is that all you guys got? Ow. 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 <laughs> Dang, someone in the audience seems to be in a lot of pain. <laughs> <laughs> I'm getting hit a lot here. Uru. All right, let's get some Uru's. You are you, Uru? Yep. Uru. 
Ooh. 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 A small thing that happened at the end of the fight by like waiting for waiting before you hit the attack button uh, at the very end, you can get to like the 700 damage attack a little bit earlier. But unfortunately, it didn't kill. That happens sometimes too. One of my favorite attentions to detail in this game is that at the very beginning of this fight, he does uh, save six saved at when he's at full HP. So if you're paying attention, yeah. you knew this was coming. <laughs> and now he's got you surrounded. I don't know what you're gonna do now. We're going to move into his pellets. The cursor's still on the screen. <laughs> <laughs> so we're going to act here, and then we're going to move into what I like to call the god pixel. You're going to stand here, and the moment the pellets become active, they're just going to hit you immediately. Boom. And uh, you got fully healed. Thanks, Flowey. <laughs> I guess they were friendliness pellets after all. Uh oh, I think Taskbot might have hijacked the stream. <laughs> no, no. Oh. You can't do that. Anyways, we're, we're just going to kill him. Yeah. Again, this is one of the things that the game doesn't uh, save, so you can just slap him, and it's faster than sparing him, because when you spare him, you have to spare him, like, yeah, it's nine a lot times. There's a lot of action to get through it. Yeah. And we can move, like, uh, before the stuff even pops up. Yeah, as soon as that the... That saves a little bit as of time. Soon as the and then also I, we close the game and reload, yeah. skip a small cutscene there, and then we're also going to close and reload when Undertale shows up on the screen. Yep. All right, so we've completed the neutral ending. What's the... Oh, 106. Nice, Noe. <laughs> yeah, that's really good. Yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah, get the cursor out of there. Cursor! One second. So we got to go back through the long elevator again. Thank you, Everchan. <laughs> 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 and now, unfortunately, we have to do a bunch of downwards wrong warps. Downwards wrong warps are horrible and are like super weird to set up, and it's really easy to like accidentally move in your cursor. They're just bad. Yep. A downward wrong warp sends you on a downward spiral, and it's no fun. So and we're when I was editing the trailers, getting mouse in the footage was a horrible, horrible time for me. <laughs> oh, man. All right, so we're going to head off to uh, Waterfall. We're going to go data fish. Who's ready? I'm ready. Do it. So I have a surprise for everybody next time we take the boat. <laughs> All right, anyway, we're going to go grab the yellow credit for... Uh, we're going to do that after the Aaron day. and... Yeah, Aaron afterwards, since we're in the area. All right, so there's going to be a whole lot of mashing going on here. Yeah, Papyrus, uh, he's, got us, he's got us hooked up. He's got the gift ready. Hey, what's up, Undyne? All right. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> See you, Papyrus. <laughs> you know, there are a lot of theories and fan stuff about this game, but one I still haven't seen answered is where does that door lead? <laughs> <laughs> where does it go? I honestly don't think I've even noticed that door. <laughs> It's an unanswered question. You're gonna have to write a theory about it. I wanna see an article where it goes. Hey, Matt Pat, you there? <laughs> <laughs> and we're gonna get some tea, some golden flower tea. Ooh. I could go for some tea. All right, so, so far we're doing well on the date. Only two things are broken, about average. 
So when Undyne here is going to reminisce about her time with Asgore, even though you can't read it. <laughs> that mashing is just insane. Now there's a story in here somewhere. And then now, actually, we're about to get to the most important part of the run. I, I know we've been, like, joking and stuff that other things are the most important, but this is actually the most important. So we're about to stir some spaghetti or something. I don't remember. But if you stir it fast, it saves, like, two seconds, and it's super important. Yep, make sure to stir fast. Go, Snowy. It's time for cooking with Undyne. He's going. Whoa! Whoa! Nice. Whoa! looking like a step mania runner there for a second. We're gonna hold right now to turn up the heat. Hotter! 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 Wait, I think that's too much. Oh. Oops! And Oops! Oh no! Oh man, now it's now it's really Florida. <laughs> <laughs> and we just went down on Dan's house. Now we're going to punch her in the face. <clears throat> Ow. <laughs> so let's see. We came in with a, a copy gift. We broke three things, burned down the house, failed the cook, and then hit her. And it's a successful date. Successful date. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Now we got the letter, and we're going to stop over by Mr. Naps the Bloop's house. That's Ooh. not Naps the Bloop's house. <laughs> 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 We're gonna play some sick tunes. <laughs> the heck is that music? I don't know, dude, but it's spooking me out. This is worse than no Siren. If you were so scared, why do you keep winking? These are winks of fear. <laughs> wait, wait, don't leave me. Please, stop. I'll never creep again. Smiley face. <laughs> All right, so we're coming up to the end of the Is Anime Real donation incentive of the bid war. Also, uh, squat la we are off. Doggo boat. So as soon as we start the date with Alphys, that will be the cutoff for Is Anime Real. So what is it at right now? It is Anime is Real is currently winning at $9,265. Anime is not real, trailing very far behind at 2800 <laughs> So if you want to get this uh, this met, you're going to have to uh, put in an eight, <laughs> basically almost Do a it. seven to $8,000 donation. Dating start? Question mark? So a really cool, fun thing in the state, for some reason, like these dating start and stop text boxes, you can just like skip them sometimes. And also because we skip dating stop, actually never mind, I'm dumb. But it's if you like one. skip all of them, you get like the music from the start of the date the whole time. Now we're gonna go hang out in the garbage dump and I think that's gonna be the cutoff. Yeah, I think it's too late. Yes, this is the cutoff. So is anime real? Anime is real. Ah. Yes. <laughs> and that's good because it's just the first option. <laughs> anyway, Alfie's is going to confess here, but much more importantly. Here we I'm, go. I'm done shooting threes. Get dunked on. All right, everybody, get ready for Jog Jog Boy. Boy. <laughs> <laughs> All right, here we go. Here's your donation incentive. Anime is real. Woo! Woo! Ah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we'll get, we'll get the other one. We'll get the other one. Don't worry. Don't soft plug, please. <laughs> Thank you. Yo, shout outs to the New Testament. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we get that phone call from Papyrus. That opens up True Laboratory, so we're going to head back on the boat one last time. One last chance the boat to snowed in by accident. 
I'm not boating to Snowden Thank you. today. <laughs> Squadala, we are off. All right, so this is coming up one of my, uh, it's one more technical part of the runs, but it's also one of my favorite. Yep. True Lab is unique to True Pacifist and all yellow credits. So it's always fun to play through. It's got a lot of wrong warps because we got a lot of long hallways. And we've got another long elevator, but this time we actually have to sit through it. Yeah. The one elevator you can't skip? Yep. Yeah, this the is the scene. only elevator you can't skip. I mean, you can skip and walk out of the room, but it doesn't do anything. Oh. <laughs> warning, warning. Elevator losing power. EM EM's <laughs> tether stability lost. I can't speak Altitude English. Altitude dropping. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we're going to crash to the bottom of the elevator shaft. Here we go. So we should be dead right now, but eh, physics, it's not important. Something about determination, I'm not quite sure. Anyway, first wrong warp here. We're going to wrong warp straight to the save point. Skip a little hallway. We're going to wrong warp again and skip this hallway. Uh, Hello? Any We're going to wrong warp again. And Any time. There we go. One more wrong warp to get snowy. There you go. <laughs> and now we're going to talk to the stink four times, and uh, we're going to meet the best encounter in the game, Memory Head, who has the best attack in the game. It's, it's annoying. Yeah, so uh, losing a run to this, this is a really fun thing to lose a run to. I mean, it's, you shouldn't lose a run to this. It's not that bad to dodge. So we're going to pull out our cell phone, and we can hear them talking, and then we're going to refuse to join them, and that'll get us the spare for them. And interestingly, with the way yellow credits I've work uh, <laughs> in True Lab here, the only encounter that actually matters is the endogony. And normally, we would be able to skip it, but unfortunately, because we have to do the same thing we did to Greater Dog to it, we will not be able to. We will be sort of skipping it, though. You'll see when we get there. And we're going to do another wrong warp here. Don't forget the yellow key. Thank you. There's a key under that bed there. You might have not seen it. All right, so we're going to head over to Endogony now. So as part of all yellow credits, we can't just skip this because there is an actual sequence that we have to do in the battle. Yeah, if you skip it, it just assumes you did it the bad way. But what we're going to do is actually use the stick on him, which will stop his attacks, and then we're going to do all the actions. We've got to be careful because we could rip the punch yeah, card. Yeah, don't here. rip the punch card, please. Thank you. <laughs> all right, so now we're going to beckon him. We're going to pet him. We're going to play with play, him. And then we're going to pet, and then we're going to pet. Yeah, we're going to pet again. One more time for good measure, and that's it. And that's all the special stuff for all the other credits. There are no more yellow credits. We have them all. Hopefully. I think. I mean, there are more, but those are the only ones that I have to focus for. Uh. Oh. <laughs> Snowy, did you get mold big? Uh, maybe. <laughs> maybe. Uh, I, I don't think so. I, I kind of realized I just didn't want to say anything. <laughs> All right, so we're going to do some actions here with Lemon Bread. Honestly, he might have gotten Mold Pig. I'm I, I got sure. Mold's Mole. I don't remember. I completely forgot about Mold's Pig. <laughs> anyway, um... So Lemon Bread, we have to hum, we have to flex, and we have to unhug because it's a fusion of Mold Big, uh, I want to say Shiren and Aaron. Yep. All we need to do is just cut it off before the credits and then assume we did. <laughs> it's always a viable strat. Anyway, here's the hardest boss in the game. Uh, oh, nice touch. Nice. Uh, uh, yeah. Good fight, good fight. Nice. Good job. All right. So we're going to grab the blue key. Interestingly, for some reason, holding up and down also moves faster behind these. But you can't do it on the way forward because you get stuck behind the amalgam. All right. So this is the pretty much the last major skip in the game. This is Reaper Bird skip. So we're going to grab tech storage from these flowers here. And we're just going to waltz right on into the Reaper Bird cutscene. Yeah, I'd just like to give a quick shout-out to uh, Cookie Apocalypse who found this skip. 
Yeah. And then we're going to wrong warp out of the room to skip the encounter completely. It's pretty neat. And then we're going to head down. And we're going to go in. Ooh. Okay, so overflowing this generator allows you to interact with it twice and keep this text box. So it's going to do some uh, interesting things to Alfie's text. You'll see. Smell. 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 <laughs> Smells pretty good. <laughs> Smell. <laughs> And also, interestingly, if you leave that room a little bit too early before the cutscene, you soft lock. Yeah, we're just going to wrong warp right into the elevator room, and that's going to put us right into the cutscene. And we're going to exit to your lab and head over to a uh, new home to complete the game. Since Snowy saved in Judgment Hall, uh, we can just take the elevator. Sans isn't here, unfortunately. So we're going to do the Rambu Kambu once again and then go up yeah, and fight the final boss. It's pretty bad if you soft lock to this since it's the end of the run. <laughs> I don't know what you're looking at me for. <laughs> Never done it ever, definitely not. <laughs> All right. So this is going to be the final battle. Uh, we're going to head in and things are going to happen. We're going to fight Flowey again. Yeah, definitely. Dude, this time we can task go here. Yeah, for sure. Round two. He just got blasted. So also, a quick interesting Mom. thing. For some reason, the text boxes at the start of this work a bit differently. And so you can like skip this text like twice as fast for some reason. So we kind of match differently. It's, it's weird. And then it, like the text switches back to normal here. Hi, Metaton. Bye, Metaton. Yes. And unfortunately, on the uh, 1.0 version, if you press space, they would go like back into the kiss position. But it's that's not that's not on 1.01, <laughs> and that's probably the the worst part of using this version. A tiny flower. Uh. Oh boy. Oh. Okay. Okay, so how come when I'm the bad guy, Sans beats the crap out of me, but when Sans, when, when Flowey's the bad guy, of course Sans does nothing. Like, what? I mean, I look, see how he's it is. just having a great time. I see how it is. Yeah, he's just chilling. Just hanging out. Nope. All right, now we're going to get strength from our friends. Uh, shout out to Sir Palo. No touch the child. Do not touch the child. Wow, he's gonna eat everybody now. Um, how he does this, don't ask me. I don't know. Magic. Yeah. <laughs> everybody can cry. It's it's okay. SGDQ, are you there? It's me, your best friend. <laughs> I 
Azrael Dreamor. So during the first phase of this, <laughs> nice. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's that's intentional. That's intentional. Don't worry. We don't need it anymore. And basically, at the start of this fight, we just have to wait for like the real fight to start. Yep. Virtual. Also, an important thing: if you uh, like close this text box, the frame, like the main part of the fight starts, you get kind of a weird glitch. Uh, unfortunately, a little bit late. The true final battle really begins. This is like the only hard attack in this whole fight, and it's the worst thing ever. Yes. No, he dodges it like a pro. And also because Snowy chose not to grab any armor earlier, he dies in like three hits. This is Asriel Dreamer, the absolute god of hyper death. That is his name in the game. It's exactly something that a little kid would come up with. It's so cool. Also, I love the background for this fight. It's great. It's so simple, but it's great. And the track that's playing, uh, Hopes and Dreams, is probably my favorite song in the OST. It's really good. Top all of Azrael's attacks are. <laughs> it really feels like he's having fun with it. Yeah, right. I love the names like Chaos Saber and Star Blaster. Like I didn't know we were doing Pokemon Z moves here. Where's Gigavolt Havoc? <laughs> so once you get to the mid phase of this fight, Azrael starts upgrading all of his attacks to be harder to dodge. Like this one. Isn't this isn't this the same? It, and it's still impossible to dodge? Because this is like the one attack that's like fully locked. Thankfully, uh, at the beginning of the fight, you can use Dream to stock full your inventory with items that heal uh, all your HP. Important thing about this attack here, he never attacks the same side more than twice in a row. So if he attacks the same side twice, you know he's going the other way. Oh wow, Flowey going for a, or Asriel going for a pretty normal pattern. That's nice. That attack can be really confusing. All right, here's his last attack, in this phase anyway. All right, so he has one more thing. This is Hyper Goner. Um, so if you don't get hit by this attack at all, you maintain full. If you get hit by it at least once, you drop the one HP. So let's see if you can not get hit here. And it's fully luck. So you can kind of just like get destroyed if the game hates you. Ooh. Nice. That was a really <laughs> clean dodge. Easy. And now Asriel's going to use his real power. He's just going to become large. <laughs> he used MS Paint to make himself bigger. <laughs> This attack is ridiculously hard to dodge. It's completely random, and you just dodged it. What? <laughs> so optimally, you don't want to die at all here, which would be cool. If you die, there's actually a strat to die a second time because your second death is faster, and that actually saves time. Yeah. So probably Snowy's going to intentionally die here, hopefully. No, he's going to no-hit it. There's only two more turns. Oh my god, he's actually going for it. Ah, the madman. Anyway, our soul is going to refuse. <laughs> but it refused. Uh, puns till the end, eh, Toby? <laughs> Not good. All right, now we're going to engage everybody. Hello, Undyne. 
so really the only important thing about this is, well, that we don't die, and then also at the same time the third turn, so we're going to Recipe on Dime. Ooh, I get the wrong Or one. Clash. Yo, Clash. <laughs> yep. So uh, the third action you do in these fights is unskippable text, so you want to do the shortest one. And the nerd out for Alfie's. Yep. And interestingly for Toriel and Asgore, this is the main reason we got the pie earlier. It saves like two seconds on Asgore because we don't have to go through an attack animation. But in this fight, it saves like three turns. Yeah. No, and then we're going to hug the goat. Yeah, definitely. All right, so here we have Papyrus and Sans Undertale. Sam's. Wait, so now you're able to dodge it. I see how it is. Wait, were you, like, faking, like... Nah, he's just bad. Were you just dying <laughs> on purpose earlier? No, I, I just had a bad fight. Oh, okay. Thanks, Ness. So now, the main reason he uh, killed the punch card earlier is that, so that he can get to the pie easily in the menu. Yeah, that's definitely the reason. And also because ripping the punch card is cool and stuff. And then we hug the goat there. That's like the famous gate goat hug everyone talks about. Definitely, yeah. <laughs> All right, just just one left to save. All right, Twitch chat, unleash the Bible thumps. <laughs> so sad. Cry, guys. <laughs> and now, because we don't really care enough to save him, uh, we're just gonna spare him. You can do either one. Did Did you just throw the stick at him? <laughs> <laughs> Interestingly, you, all, you actually can't die here. Even if you're on one health, just nothing happens when you get hit. So this track, uh, his theme in the OST is actually a lot faster, but Toby made the very correct decision of slowing it down for this sequence, and it's great. I totally didn't cry playing this the first time, not at all. <laughs> This attack's a little unfair, but you can dodge it if you're good. <laughs> that is... Yeah, he doesn't have much HP left. That's a lot of zeros. So we're not hugging the goat, right? We're not doing it. <laughs> cookie, don't don't be don't be <laughs> don't be that guy. We're not, cookie. we're not doing it, right? Don't be that guy, Cookie. Come on, come on. Let's hear some noise for the goat. But it loses 20 seconds. Come on, guys. Let's hear some noise for the goat. Hey Whoa. guys, we hugging the goat. <laughs> I think they want us to hug the goat, Shay. Let's do it. <laughs> Hug the goat is the option on the right, so you should go over to it. <laughs> just, just don't look at it. Just menu over. It. Okay, I'm stop. not gonna look at it. Give him a nice big bear hug. <laughs> Come on, let's hear some noise. <laughs> Yay! Yay!
It's the only correct choice. <laughs> yep. Uh, there's no multi-clienting going on here. Don't worry about it. <laughs> so there's a small strat here. Basically, at the end of like this cutscene coming up soon, uh, if you close your game and then reopen, it auto-saves at the very end of the Azrael fight. And I actually I realized this because I lost like an all endings run to this auto-save. So now it's a strat, and it saves like a second. Because normally here we would go back down into the last room and wrong warp, but we can just close the game. And we're right there. Woo! Hey. All right, we're going to walk out of the underground now. All right, so time is coming up on the final Toriel text box. Mouse. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, it doesn't matter. We're going to stay with Toriel. Yeah. Partially because it's faster, but also it's better. Just out of time. I want to stay with Mom. All right. So time's time coming on. up in just a few seconds. Yep. And, and time. time. Missed a yellow credit by mistake. <laughs> you did? Yeah, we missed uh, Molds Big. Yeah. Oh boy. So shoutouts to Molds Big for ruining the run. <laughs> <laughs> That's really the most fun part of all yellow credits. You like get a good PB. You're so excited, and then oh, I forgot something. <laughs> <laughs> Almost all yellow credits. So Almost was, all yellow credits. <laughs> what was the time? 136.10. Nice. Not too bad. So in all yellow credits, you see all these yellow credits here? Whenever we spare something right, we get these yellow credits here. And there's also a way to turn them pink in the ruins, but we decided it would just, like, confuse people. All pink credits is the best category, TBH. <laughs> All yellow credits just sounds better. That's the main reason. It's not as good as all text boxes, though. <laughs> <laughs> if we have a second for a couple donations. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. Absolutely. We actually have a $6 donation from Flowery. <laughs> 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 that says, ouch. <laughs> We have a one thousand one hundred dollar and one, or sorry, one thousand one hundred and one dollar donation from Fan Gamer, one of our sponsors. That says, "Hey Toby, hey Spencer." Ah, don't look! Don't look! <laughs> don't look at it. <laughs> You can keep going with the donations. Absolutely. Uh, we have a $75 donation from Moonlight Kitsune. Um, still working on getting around to playing Undertale, but I'm getting there. Love the run. We also had an anonymous $850 donation that says, ow, ow, ooh, ow, ow. Sounds like someone needs a doctor of the borderless variety. Maybe this will help. Donation goes towards the Mario Odyssey run. Heat rope? <laughs> <laughs> Who's that character on Wait. the right? <laughs> Who are these guys? <laughs> I've never seen these guys. Use before. your imagination, boys. Are we supposed to use our imagination to like figure out who they are? <laughs> Matt Pat, I need help. 
We also had a $200 donation from Glacia. Thanks to the Undertale speedrunning community for being an awesome group of people. Heart emoji. Also, a $500 donation from Richard E.B., which says, core best song. And a $50 donation from Michael K., which says, while playing casually, I tried to save all with the yellow spare option, but I failed so often and killed a few where I was just bad. <laughs> Snowy showed me how to make friends with everyone. Good Simple luck thing. on your run, and good luck to all the other runners still coming up. SGDQ is a great experience every year, thanks to all of you. You know, mold big doesn't, doesn't really matter. It's like a big mold small. Who's Jerry? They're pra <laughs> Wait, huh? <laughs> Who's Jerry? Jerry? I don't know. <laughs> All right, should we do special thanks? Yes! Oh, yeah, I'm in here, by the way. <laughs> all yellow credits. All yellow you credits hit for all real. Unfortunately, it's actually not possible. You could hit all of these, but the later parts, you can't hit all of them. So we're just going to hit none of them instead. So yeah, if you're all interested in running Undertale, uh, there is a great Discord server and a great community. Um, everybody's super friendly. Pretty nice guys. Uh, I got into it because of a lot of the people in the community. It's a lot of fun. Uh, yeah. So interestingly, for this part of the credits, you can't actually just get into like the bottom right corner and sit there and not do any of this, <laughs> which is what I do, but no one else seems to do it. And it's, it's not as so fun. Easy. Then. It's so much more fun. It's not as fun. And this is probably the hardest part. Getting through these can be really tight. You better run into me. Hey, that's Jake. Hey, look. <laughs> I should have hit that. <laughs> Oh, nice. That's really good. So now we should be in the clear for the most part. Don't jinx it. Unfortunately, some people who back to this game have really long names. <laughs> There's a specific one at the end. Like Sharon Isabel Simmons. There it is. Or Nicholas Missiles de Karen. <laughs> <laughs> or Jeremy Ogan. <laughs> I'm sorry, I can't pronounce that. Nice. Nice. Yeah. Woo! <laughs> All yellow and text. Dude, that was a lot of fun. Yo, shout outs to the Undertale team, especially Toby Fox. Shout outs to you and this wonderful guy right here. The game is amazing. Thanks for making it. Thanks for making this game. And thank you, GDQ, for having me. And thank you, everybody, for showing up to watch this run. I love you all. And that's the end of Undertale. And have a good day, everybody. Continue donating. Cursor! Cursor! <laughs> 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 And thank you again, SnowyY101, for that amazing Undertale, almost all yellow credits run. All right, coming up next, we're going to be having the Super Mario Maker 3v3 relay race here with Carl Sagan42, Graham Pooh Bear, GlitchCat7, Failstream, Cliffy, and Jakku. Before we head on over to that, though, let's start our quick sponsor ad break here.
Due to the response of the Yeti LLC naming characters in the event, we're happy to announce that we will be naming every character for SGDQ 2018. Want to name Cloud after your hamster? You're in luck if your hammy's name is Roy. Have a clever name for that Pokemon trainer? She'll be known as Roy. We would like to thank you for your cooperation. Have a fun and safe SGDQ. This message is brought to you by Yeti Roy. And welcome back, everyone, to Summer Games Done Quick 2018. Again, I am your host, Sakura Subasa. And let's take a quick minute to talk about why we're all here today. So we are here to support Doctors Without Borders, Maisons Sans Frontières, which is a humanitarian organization working in more than 60 countries around the world. MSF is a private international association, and MSF provides assistance to populations in distress, to victims of natural or man-made disasters, and to victims of armed conflict. They do so irrespective of race, religion, creed, or political convictions. Find out more at doctorswithoutborders.org. And with that, we're going to pass it off to Spike Vegeta and Nicro Vita for an interview about Super Mario Odyssey. And welcome back, everyone, to Summer Games Done Quick 2018. We're unfortunately on the final day of the marathon. You guys saw upcoming runs right there. We have only four runs left. Furiously getting set up for Super Mario Maker, the relay race right now. For them, though, guys, we got a bunch of awesome prizes to give out. We got a bunch of awesome incentives we still need to meet, including stuff like the Final Fantasy VI 100% incentive. We need to get to 100,000. And a huge one, our final setup block. We need to make it not setup block. We need to make it Super Mario Odyssey any percent in there. We are currently, I believe, close to $90,000 right now. We need to get to $150,000. And to mo promote that right now, I am joined by the Super Mario Odyssey runner himself, Nicrovita. How you doing, man? What's up, dude? How are you doing, man? Good. How, first GDQ, right? Yeah, it's crazy. Yeah. You just told me how he, him and his buddies drove 15 hours to get here. So. Yeah, it was a really long trip. It was yeah. well worth it, though. Well, we're, a great time. We're certainly happy to have you here. One of the best runners in the world at Super Mario Odyssey right now. And I believe you actually come from the Smash community, if I'm correct. Yes. I want to ask you about that because I've always thought that the Smash community, competitive Smash, and the uh, just because the speedrunning community, we're both inherently Nintendo based. It's a little more retro based. That I think we would just mesh really well. Do you personally find coming from your competitive Smash background that the skill set there and maybe the mindset of playing Smash translated at all to speedrunning, or is it really two completely different things? Oh, uh, it definitely helped. Like me playing, I play. I've been playing melee for like four years or so. Mm -hmm. So. It gave me the help me get the mindset ready, help me get in the in the groove of like practice regimens and stuff like that. And sure. Getting in, yeah. So I would say it definitely helped me out, and the whole competitive nature it definitely like translates over to speedrunning. So I think the two go hand in hand. It's uh, great to be part of both communities. Now, one thing that's been awesome about watching Odyssey speedrunning is that it's pulled people from all sorts of different communities, whether it's been Smash or just other speedrunning communities, people who've never played a Mario game. We've got well over a thousand times on that leaderboard. And up there, right at the top, now near the top, going back and forth right now, uh, I saw, okay, Nicrovia, yeah, I'd never heard of you before. Was this your first speed game? So I actually started speedrunning, uh, it was last, uh, last year in March. I started with SM64, picked it up, thought it looked cool, I thought I'd get into speedrunning, something I've been kind of meaning to do for a while. And uh, it was around that time when the Odyssey trailers came out, and I was like, well, this game has looks to have the same kind of like style of movement. There's long sure. jumps, dives, cool stuff. Looks like you can do a lot with it. So I said, hey, why don't I just hop on the new game? Uh, I think it'd be good. It's, I know it's going to be competitive. I kind of saw it coming, right. and uh, it was a lot of fun. Uh, just that whole ride of the whole community building up everything at this point. Sure. And, uh, I knew, I knew it would be well worth it to try it out, and uh, it's got me this far, so yeah. Yeah. We're, we're getting hype here in the, in the audience right now. Uh, uh, um, 
Uh, I want to talk a little bit about, you just brought up Super Mario 64. We got to obviously just see Punkation and Cheese thrown on the race. I'm sure you saw it yesterday yeah, yeah. as well. Is there any part of you that could see yourself trying to get to that level competitive with the game? Uh, I definitely plan to go back to 64. I don't know how far I would take it because, you know, there's I have so many things I want to do, so many games I want to be good at. It's Absolutely. really hard to balance all of them. And to be at a top level in a game like that, it's... Uh, sure. It's pretty crazy. Yeah, 10,000 hours or so. So let's talk a little bit about the game that you are known for right now that you're getting to run here, Super Mario Odyssey. I guess, that's, I mean, all of us could say different things. I could say, oh, I love the movement, blah, blah, blah. For you, what is it specifically that makes you not just what, that you wanted to run the game initially, but has kept you in the game for so long now? I guess it's just because I am so competitive. Like, sure. again, coming from Melee, that's always just how I am. I always just like being the best at things. Uh, I've, I've always known for like, oh, just picking something up and just like kind of being good at it. Yeah. So it's just been a lot of fun. Like I've grown a stream with it. People enjoy watching like every day. Like I'm always, I'm going for world records. I just like, I've always loved cool movements. So it really just has to do with the game itself, just being so open to so many options and it really fun to play, yeah. Shout out to Nintendo for making a game with absolutely incredible movement options all oh, over yeah. the place. So you love any percent as I can see. The great thing about Odyssey, another uh, one of the great aspects, is that there are so many other categories that we can move into. People have done stuff like World Peace, Dark Side, Darker Side, All Moons, 100%. Do you see yourself realistically looking at these other categories? Do you see yourself wanting to move back to SM64? What's kind of, you think, the next thing on the horizon? Or is it just, you just lost any percent record, I know, a couple days ago due to yeah. a new clip that was found. Yeah, we got new, is it just saves, sitting there? Uh, like 20 seconds or something, so I yeah. got to hit the lab on that when I get back home, <laughs> for sure. Um, but yeah, as far as other categories go, uh, darker side is something that's piqued my interest a little bit. I think uh, the length of it and like the whole idea of like you know you're you're basically getting the 500 moons to get to the final kingdom. So it just feels like the uh, completionist category to go for. Sure, just a little more. All moons and 100 percent. Those can go up to like 10 hours or so. Right. It's pretty pretty long. It's I like because I'm more of like about optimizing little things. I like to really get in there and pick sure. at stuff. So a longer category like that, just I, I think for me it would be a little too much. I like uh, keeping it short and fast. Yeah, it's almost, it kind of isolates it to where you're really, you're not just thinking about, oh, all these moons and all this routing and everything. It's just the movement from yeah. one moon to another. Watching you in the, but this guy's been working hard all week. I feel like mostly what you've done, you've come here and you've practiced. Yeah. He's going to put on a great show for you guys. But just, you know, I felt like I put a decent amount of hours into that game. And just watching your movement just from one moon to another, just so many little things I didn't even know about. So I'm excited to see you get to pull it off all for us today. I want to cut, cut to a couple of social media questions. Again, guys, we want to get in those donations, get Super Mario Odyssey met. You want to see Nitro running it on stage for you guys today. It'll be coming up right after Mario Maker and Ocarina of Time Bingo. For, we got one here from Redrill. What is your favorite kingdom to do in the run? Uh, favorite kingdom is probably Lost. I think a lot yeah, of people yeah, yeah, think right. Lost is really cool. It's just super fast paced. There's lots going on. Like the moons per minute is the highest for right. every kingdom. Uh, a lot of scary things can happen, like almost every moon is very risky, so like any little wrong thing, you know, the run could take a turn, uh, there's klepto you got to avoid, yeah. so just the, I guess the risk to reward really makes that kingdom exciting, and again, it's really fast and a lot of cool movement, so I'd say that's probably the, one of the most fun to run and definitely a fan favorite. Absolutely, one of my favorites as well. We got one here from Supersonic71087. Shouts to Supersonic. Hope you're doing well. Uh, what is the most difficult trick in the run? What's probably the single trick you're most worried so, about hitting? Snow Dram, the trick in snow I'll be doing right when I show up to that is uh, it's like this perfect, it, it's almost like near near perfect inputs to get onto this cliffside. You're only supposed to get to this moon through a painting, like post game from like the Mushroom right. Kingdom. So. You're not supposed to get there, but you can just like barely make it if you actually do the right inputs. And it can be really scary. If you're going for world record, you miss it once, it's completely over. You're dropping all the and way down. Yeah, it's it's pretty far into the run too, so Lord. it's pretty devastating to miss. So I'd say it's probably the most scary uh, trick to do, but I really hope to show it off. I've been playing too much OOT randomizer. I watched you do it for the first time in the back room. I didn't even know that was yeah. part of the route. Looks terrifying. It's unbelievable you can even get access to that. Yeah, mode, like it you used to only be like a two-player strat, actually. Uh -huh. But yeah, the fact that we can just barely make it, people figured out 
how to just make the vectoring just enough. Sure. The, the cap throw is the perfect time. It's it's really interesting. Do you see? You brought up one quick aside from that. You just bring up two player. Two player is actually pretty sick in yeah, this game. Yeah, two player is crazy. Do you see yourself realistically trying to find someone to co-op this? So with? I have a buddy, one of my mods, Travis Percent. Uh, shout outs to him. Uh, he couldn't make it. But we actually started like toying around with two player a little bit. I was thinking about going to it someday. It's just you know we don't always have enough time because you know unfortunately for two player it's not an you online gotta thing. You gotta you gotta be in the same room and stuff. Um, but it's really interesting and at, still to this day the the two player world record is actually still faster than the one player. Uh -huh. uh, they're just they're just inactive. A lot of the players just kind of took a break or stopped playing. So there's not really much going on in two player right now. But it's definitely a really uh, interesting way to play the game and it's actually completely different from a lot of the one player things. So I could I would consider going back to it. One final question for you, and this is me being a dirty Twitch chat member coming in and being like, when sub one? How realistic is has sub the one number one for question. this game? So I, I get that a lot. I mean, you can't avoid it. Sure. I have a command that says sub one, no. No. Nope. It's just, it's like, okay, so it's theoretically possible. The community has been working like extremely hard on, we have this best theory timesheet where you can submit even just like, one small portion of the game doesn't have to be anything like specific say hey this is faster can you time this this looks good sure. and we have from every moon all the times added up and just like maybe a couple weeks ago we just got that time to under an hour like with human strats all little clips and basically little basically a theory task yeah. you guys put together so in theory it is possible for sure but it is just it's so above us right now, and what, we're, right now. what we're capable of doing like pulling off a run like that um i couldn't tell you when it would happen we i couldn't tell you if we would need more strats i don't know if you know if it would just be a matter of time again but yeah sure. it's it's pretty insane so don't expect to see sub hour anytime soon yeah. uh, unless some something crazy happens so either next, a skip yeah. or a completely new piece of movement tech or something yeah, happens yeah. yeah so it's sub hour at the moment is completely out of the question i'd say it is an honor to have you here, man. I definitely look forward to your run, guys. Again, make sure to get in all those donations. Get Super Mario Odyssey on the board. You got two runs left to get it there. I know you guys can make it happen as we push towards $2 million here at SGDQ 2018. Before we head off, though, I'm going to give you guys a few incentives for you guys. We need to talk about some prizes. Sent, what you got for me, man? Hey, Spike. How are you doing, buddy? Doing good, dude. Uh, always a pleasure to join you here on the couch. Yes, sir. But, uh, you know, today I thought I'd, uh, I'd do a quick little interview with one of my own friends, if you don't mind. Okay. Yeah, you know, right right here. Guys, you know him as, uh, as Chompy. His full name is Chompers the Shark right here. And, uh, you know, Chompy, it, it's been great working with you this week. Uh, you know, how have you been? How are you doing right now? Nah, yeah, okay. I, I see. That makes sense. Good. Good. Um, so, I mean, you've gotten a lot of fans over this week. You've gotten, like, really popular. People love you. They're even drawing, like, little fan art of you. Someone actually came up to us and just gave us this, this beautiful fan art of Chompy the Shark and some weird dude wearing a hood with ears. I don't know what that's about. Don't, don't worry about it. Probably not important. Uh, but, yeah, you know, any, any thoughts on that? How are you feeling? What, what do you like? You got anything you want to tell your fans? Good. Good. Yeah. Yeah, that, that, makes, that makes sense. I, I believe you there. Um, so I, I see, yeah, you're covered in prizes right now. You got, got any message you want to give everyone about those prizes? Okay. Good. Yeah, no, I, I respect that. Well, you know, Chompy, it's been an absolute pleasure having you uh, this week. You know, working with you has been super fun. Um, you know, any, any parting words you want to say to everyone? Hmm. Wow, okay. Yeah, yeah. Good, good. All right, well, it was good having you. Thanks, thanks so much for being here. We're just going gonna to leave you there because you seem to be buried under the prizes. Now, speaking of those prizes, Spike, we got, uh, we got some good ones to show off. I mean, uh, what, you've, you've never seen a man interview a shark before? Uh, might be a first. Yeah, I mean, you know, whatever. You never know what's going to happen here. Uh, so, guys, we got a bunch of really cool prizes for you uh, right down here. On the table, if we can get a shot of those, we have uh, seven beautiful 
uh, Undertale paintings here depicting the uh, the seven souls from Undertale. Super cool. They come to us uh, via Iggy Zig. Um, I believe they are a $20 minimum donation. As, as a reminder, guys, every prize we're talking about right now is going from now until the finale. So you guys got plenty of time to get in those donations. And you're going to want to get in those donations because, like Spike said, Mario Odyssey still needs a, a good sixty, seventy thousand dollars $70,000 to make mm -hmm. happen. And you guys want to see that run. I want to see that run. Absolutely. Of course. Uh, so some other great stuff we have here uh, from our good friend and illustrator, Kari Fry. We have Legend of the Hero depicting uh, all kinds of her wonderful... Uh, art uh, from Legend of Zelda, uh, you know, items, characters, enemies, and uh, she actually went ahead and even signed the book and dated it to uh, SGDQ 2018 for us. Oh, wow. Very nice of her, and that's a $5 donation. Uh, that is an absolute steal for that oh, prize. Yeah. You, and you know what? I keep seeing people who don't know about this. So the dust jacket of these books, and by the way, the actual like printed cover of this is, is beautiful, mm -hmm. uh, but the yeah. dust jacket of her books double as posters. Oh! Yeah, no, it's, it's a nice nice little extra feature there. Yeah. Sick. Huge fan. So I'll just uh, pass that over to you, Spike. Now, from our friends... Look at them myself. Toby Fox and Fan Gamer, we have a bunch of Undertale plushies. I mean, you've seen them, Spike. You got, yep. we, got, we got all of them. We got, yep. we got Papyrus. We got Timmy. We got Sans. <laughs> we got a lesser dog. Everyone As loves someone lesser who's dog. never played this video game before, my connection to these, my God. <laughs> I mean, they're and, adorable. I can say that. Come on, Spike. Everyone loves Goat Mom. You love oh, Goat Mom. Oh, yeah, right? Goat Mom. It's a mom and it's a goat. Yeah, sure. What's we, not to love? We, we got little mini Timmy there, you know. All right. It's, it's all good. And I, I believe those are a $20 minimum donation um, until the end of the finale. So Spike, right. let, me, let me take these off of you real quick. Sure, yeah. We're going to go yep. get set up real quick. Looks like you got to go get mic'd up for, uh, for a run that may or may not be happening that in a few minutes here. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Probably pretty right. important. I'll Good speak luck. over. Thank you, Spike. I appreciate it. So uh, from our good friend... Atiyama, we have this beautiful picture of uh, the great wolf Sif from uh, Dark Souls. Oh, there. Uh, right. You know, absolutely beautiful digital print here. Um, and again, he was super cool with us. He actually deleted the original high definition version of this after printing it off for us. So this is the only like copy of this print at this resolution in existence. It, it's just absolutely amazing, super beautiful. It's a $30 minimum donation from now until the end of the marathon. Make sure to get your donations in for it. And you know, speaking of beautiful paintings, uh, from Stine Friedhelm. I gotta, gotta walk over now. Too far away from all my stuff. We have this lovely rendition of um, the Dark Link fight from Ocarina of Time. You know, I actually had to fight Dark Link a few days ago in a randomizer. Haven't done that in probably about a decade. And uh, I really wish the fight looked like this. It's, uh, it hasn't really held up to the test of time, but this is, this is an absolutely beautiful piece of concept art of what it might have looked like. Um, from our good friend, uh, So Much to Sew, we have a beautiful Pixel Mario quilt. I, I can just levitate it to me off screen. That is, uh, that is my new superpower. Hopefully I'm holding it right side up this time. Yeah, yeah, we're holding it right up, side up this time. This thing is uh, super cool, super beautiful. It's got a Pixel Mario on it. It's actually really warm. It's got like a fleece backing to it. Um, I, could, I could get comfy under this for sure. Um, and that is a $15 minimum donation from now until the end of the marathon. Um, we have uh, the beautiful Vivi Push that's uh, right behind my head. Let me, let me see if I can just reach back and... Oh, yep, here we go. I got him. Comes to us via Ellen Kramer. Um, I just love her plushy work. I mean, look at this guy. He's, he's adorable. He's super detailed. He's actually wearing pants. Like, the pants are, are real. The shoes are real. They, they come off. Um, the detail that goes into this thing is, is so amazing. Uh, definitely love him. $30 minimum donation from now until the end of the finale. Um, and I mean, guys, we have just absolutely so many prizes, prizes here, but I could not talk about them without, of course, mentioning uh, the lovely Sans Undertale statue we have on the desk, courtesy of Jay Thor. I mean, come on, look at Sans. Again, Sans uh, can freestand, so we can just take him off and spin him around real quick to show you all the detail in his, in his hoodie, in his sandals, on his hands. Like, this thing is super detailed, super amazing. And of course, he comes with this wonderful stand depicting his um, really difficult to dodge attacks from the bad end of Undertale. You are going to have a bad time if, if this goes your way. And of course, guys, uh, that's a $50 minimum donation from now until the end of the finale. That's going to give you a third of the way entry into our grand prize, $150 cumulative throughout the marathon. You're going to get an Xbox One X, oh, I got to reach, a PlayStation 4 Pro, 
Oh, we're just stacking them on me now. A Nintendo on. Switch. This one's light at least. Uh, and a pretty sweet gaming PC. So guys, that's gonna be all the prizes I have time to show you, but we have so many prizes for this block. You're gonna want to go to gamesdonequick.com, check the tracker, you're gonna see all the information you need to see on prizes, on incentives, uh, on everything you're gonna need for the rest of the marathon. Um, as always guys, I'm sent, and I just want you all to know that reaching $1.5 million, getting this marathon off the ground, and seeing this amazing Super Mario Maker race fills me with determination. And thank you so much to Spike Vegeta, Nike Vita, and Scent for that amazing interview. We're going to take a quick Twitch ad break here, and then we're going to get started on the Super Mario Maker run, so please stay tuned.